there. This is episode 10 for Basil, our King of Thieves, for Baldur's Gate Enhanced sure. Edition. Last time, Basil procrastinated on his quest to save the region and prevent a terrible fate for the people of the Sword Coast, and instead, we went out and explored the wilderness for a few days, getting some trinkets and cash. What a great guy. Today, his final project is due and he's going to stop procrastinating. He's going to chat with Emerson, who's actually very happy to see someone so brilliantly handsome. I mean, my god, what a gorgeous man. Anyway, Basil's going to stop procrastinating, and he's gonna, he and the crew are going to head and complete their group project. They're going to head into the Nashkel Mines and clear out the monsters in there. Okay, since we've successfully charmed our way into getting a slightly better dialogue with Emerson... We're going to make our way into the mines. The guards and the miners will all be here to warn Basil and the crew about the devils that are down there. And Kagan, well, Kagan's going to know better. In a little bit, when he gets a whiff of the, the smell down there, he'll be able to tell us. That's not just stereotyping against dwarves. That's saying that he's experienced. So Miner Dink is going to help us... Uh, gonna give us a dagger so we can return it and as mentioned Kagan smells cobalts again it's not racist because it, it is what dwarves know it's based off of his experience so anyway the little lizard lizard rats are down there and they're gonna shoot arrows at us so Basil and his crew are gonna head on down see we knew it was cobalts Basil didn't that's called dramatic irony kids See, this content is educational. Basil and the crew now having an idea. They're going to head on down to the depths of the mine. I'm not going to show you every single fight, but I will show you some of the big fights throughout these different levels. The journey is way better for this uh, playthrough than it was for my earlier playthrough. And it really helps that we have level 5, 6, and 7 characters here. Like I said, the crew brings Kylie's dagger back and he tells us that oh, it's cobalts. Here. Good. We we knew. Like I said, a crew that's uh, between 5 to 7 is great, but even a crew that's Go between levels ice, 2 Go and 4 would be able to handle these cobalts pretty decently. I, need an I would say that the extra Wouldn't equipment that we've Shame been able to boy, have, we'll uh, that we found aside. through uh, adventuring and we were able to purchase, uh, really does help out. As mentioned, Basil and his crew don't really have any issues. Um, they are able to have, they're able to cross a bridge, handle any traps. Um, the distance weapons that we have basically allow us to basically hold and use volley fire on any hordes that come our way. So even MOM doesn't really need to worry about anything. But we're going to, you know, be conscientious and try to prevent as much damage as possible. Having uh, having all of our guys with missile weapons is fantastic for this region. Uh, especially when there are traps nearby. Basil and his crew are really kind of an ideal level to make this into a cakewalk. Uh, I think for my next playthrough and every other playthrough that I'll do after this, I'm going to try to make sure that um, they're at a level that is... I wouldn't say any lower than this, but I certainly don't need to spend the extra time adventuring. Once I get up to levels uh, 5 and 6 and 7, then we're at a good point. We took out a ghoul. We're going to take out the spiders here. Not have to worry about any, uh, any nastiness, and even if... Uh, Kagan or anyone were to get poisoned, we have Dinah Hare who can cast uh, Cure Poison, and we have uh, Viconia who has a Cure Poison spell just in case. Always a good idea to have uh, extra spells for those just in case situations, especially for your clerics. You never know when they're going to come in handy, right? So, uh, for example, I don't think we've cast, and this is actually on Dinah Hare, but I don't think we've cast um, a Mirror Image at all on her, because we haven't really needed it yet um but we could just as easily have it and we could have just as easily use it so it's never a bad idea to have stuff for defenses 
higher levels of the game, they are absolutely essential, and it's essential to be casting those spells early on in a fight. Uh, it's kind of my general lack of, of uh, tactical ability that kind of prevents me from using these spells as well as possible. But, with that being said, Brute Force helps us to do a nice amount of damage, even through this uh, mini-boss section of the... Uh, of the uh, level 3 with the Cobalt Shaman and the uh, Cobalt Chieftain. And uh, we're also going to try to see... No, I think in this situation I do not end up using Backstab. I think we used Backstab last time with Montron. It did not end up well for him. Uh, I'll make sure we keep Bacconi... Uh, sorry, keep Dynahair safe. That is a Chain Lightning spell. You can already see at this level, it's just lackluster. It doesn't do anything. It's not. It, it's it's one of those spells that was really a wasted opportunity from the original creators of the game. So, M1's going to disarm the last of these traps. And from there, we should be able to make our way deeper into the mines with virtually no problems. Basil's going to use his stealth skill to slide on through. Um, we're actually not going to backstab sure. in this situation. There's a lot of goons there that we don't want to really deal with. Instead, we are going to keep our distance and kind of uh, set our own little ambush and have our own separate, uh, basically two-pronged attack talk. on these goons. All right. You notice, Don't by the way, I have Kagan armed me. also with throwing axes. I think that that gives them a little additional um, uh, AC and also just um, does, uh, I think, a little more damage, too. And make sure we keep Dinahair safe. She, uh, racing out in the middle like that is a great way for her to get killed. And with that, we're ready to go into the last level of the mine to the final entrance. The way this fight's gonna go is uh, Malehi will trigger once we open up that chest and uh, so we want to make sure we have traps set here so that all the kobolds uh, will end up just dying right away. It's not going to impact the skeletons that some up here so we'll have to melee those goons but the having fewer knives at us is not for, never a bad idea. Um, Dinahair and Viconia have an exchange about respect and uh, kind of almost a, a form of prejudice uh, against Viconia because she is a drow. But of course, uh, not gonna not gonna lie, drow kind of earn it. So Basil's is gonna set his second trap right near the entrance so that it's gonna come from both angles and take out those kobolds. Malahi is going to freak out at the fact that we are what? here, and here? we are going to bluff our way past, which is always a good idea. We're going to have the rest of the crew come in. We'll end up having Kagan and Minx uh, take on the melee force of damage while uh, Basil tries to stealth. He has to try to find a good place to stealth, and it actually takes me a few minutes to get a good place. This area is actually very well lit, but in the meantime, uh, once I get him stealthed up and in position, I'll put everybody else in position, and then we will open that chest, take the items, and uh, we'll see what happens once I do that. So Malahi reveals his treachery. He had never had any intention of, of being honest. And in fact, he actually has the letters we need on him. So we're going to kill him. We're going to beat him with uh, axes and swords. I'm going to try to have Basil backstab him. He misses, unfortunately. Uh, but it doesn't really matter because... We have uh, all of our goons basically are able to just take him down. Uh, Viconia pleads with us not to show him mercy. I agree. I don't think uh, I don't think he would have shown mercy in uh, our situation. Malay, he's gonna go down. So will these kobolds, and then we will go ahead and take the loot off of his body and see what's up. It is certain that the death of Malahe will relieve the fears of the terrorized folk of Nashkem. But you remain uneasy. While the half-orc may indeed have caused the evils that befell the mine, the shortage of iron is too widespread to be his doing alone. His letters confirm your suspicions. 
And though they give little indication as to where his cohorts are hiding, they may have links to the bandits that currently plague the Coast Way. So Basil learns that uh, the Malahi and his kobolds were sent down here uh, in order to try to disrupt the iron. They weren't supposed to actually uh, reveal themselves uh, to the miners. They were just sent there to pour crap on the iron. But uh, naturally, that, that got some attention from us and from everybody, pretty much. And especially the folks, uh, well, including the folks from Everskia, Eriska, the elven area. Viconia, of course, will uh, torment Xan if they are in the same party. She will torment any normal full elf if they're in the party. So, um, although I don't think she actually starts a conflict or starts an actual fight with them. I think they just, like, show their hatred towards each other. Um, but with that said, we're not going to take Xan with us because we took him last time. And, uh, I mean, he's okay. He certainly is an interesting... Uh, interesting companion to take. He's funny, uh, and he is an enchanter, which has some pretty powerful spells, but eh, we just don't need it. Especially when we have Dinah hair that can literally cast, like, you know, really powerful damage spells. So with that, we're going to go ahead and uh, review these letters. Again, they kind of confirm what I just said, and they were sent by a guy named Tazok. Tezok appears to be the head of the bandits in this area, so naturally our next step is to figure out what on earth these bandits are all about. But with that, we are out of time. Next time, we will make our way back up to the surface, be big damn heroes, we'll finish up a few more things in Nashkel, and then hopefully we'll start knocking out these, um, these bandits, figure out what's going on with the bandits, and try to make our way into the bandits, into the, um, into the bandits' headquarters. After all, if they're gonna start stealing stuff, they need to figure out who the king is. And the king is Basil, because he's, he's, he's the king of thieves. That's, that's the whole shtick I'm running with here, because he steals stuff. Yeah. Anyway, uh, in the meantime, if you're interested in checking out any of my other content, Feel free to take a look at my starter guides and my other playthrough videos. Uh, I'm also going to be starting a new series on the classic game Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, uh, and I'll be doing a run through for that. So I definitely encourage you to check that out. And with that, I certainly hope also to look into um, Baldur's Gate 3. So, uh, so with that, I just want to thank you all so much for watching. Uh, and feel free to subscribe, give the video a like, or leave a comment. I've had some great comments on some of the kit reviews so far. Uh, discussion of which kits are fun to play, and I've been having a lot of fun uh, with that. So, thank you all so much. Take care, and good luck. We're all counting on you.